everybody signed their uh, forms. All right, good, 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 good. All right. And see, is the video started? Excellent. Okay. All right. Some new faces this morning. That's exciting. Typically, we start at quarter after. So what we do is if you have signed on for a hands-on spot and you don't get here by quarter after, you lose your spot and it goes to the next person on the waiting list. It's just policy of how we do things around here. I think that kind of makes it fair for everybody. So, um, welcome to Takeaway Homemade at Large Nails. Um, so some of you have heard this spiel, but I'm gonna say it again because some of you haven't. And um, so just wanted to introduce uh, ourselves. I am Tasha Allison, and this is Steve Fountain, and we are the co-pastors of Large Church of Nazareth. Yeah, there he is back there. Um, also known as Large Naz. We have uh, lived in Large, and we've pastored here for about three years, and uh, about three and a half years now, I guess. And uh, prior to that, we served at Broom Hill Nazarene Church in, in Glasgow, and then prior to that, we lived in... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And then part of that, we lived in the United States, in South Carolina, where we taught people how to grow healthy food, how to cook healthy food, and how to preserve healthy food at a place called Icebox Urban Farm. And so Icebox is a charity that Pastor Steve and I created um, many, many moons ago, about 10 years ago now. And, uh, and we had a campus in Augusta, Georgia, in downtown Augusta, Georgia, where we had community gardens, we had an enormous greenhouse, um, this was our classroom space, and, um, and so we basically uh, did kind of what we're doing this morning, is we taught people how to um, be frugal and cook healthy, good food. Um, and here we are as well. So, so that is kind of just where we came from, just so that you know, because I know it's a little weird for pastors to be holding like, you know, a cooking class in the sanctuary. Um, so that's, that's who we are and where we came from and why we're doing this, because we believe that not only are we called to take care of each other, but we are called to take care of our own bodies so that we can do that. And so today we are going to be making mushroom risotto. Um, I did want to also mention that there are absolutely no stupid questions. And so if you have a question, raise your hand. You can stop me at any point and, um, and ask your questions. Okay, so the first thing um, I wanted to talk about is the rice. Um, I'm going to get my notes settled here. And we'll, you know what? There's enough new faces. We'll play this video. This is uh, the Batch Lady. I absolutely adore her. She's brilliant. Her recipes are brilliant. And um, she does a lot of slow cooker recipes. She does a lot of like prepping ahead of time and then putting it in the freezer so that you, you know, when you have the time, you can prep a bunch of things. And then when you're short on time, you just grab it out of the freezer and pop it in your slow cooker. So this is just a quick video about um, the energy usage of different uh, kitchen appliances. Do you need to do that or do I need to do that? Okay. Hey guys, it's the Batch Lady here and I'm way down here. Hello. I brought this up because I wanted to show you. I've been researching a lot through Citizens Advice Bureau and lots of other places about what is the best and cheapest appliance to use. As you can see, electric cooker is up there at 87 pence. Then your other cookers are still 72, 33 for your gas cooker. So they are quite expensive if you're turning them on every day because you need to preheat them. Look at the difference. Slow cooker, 16 pence a day. Air fryer, 14 pence. Microwave, 8 pence. This is based on the average time that you would have them on to cook your meals. You definitely want to have a think about slow cookers, air fryers and microwaves as things start to get more expensive and energy bills start to go up. These three, I would say, are going to be key in the next year to keeping your energy bills down. And you can actually buy them all at relatively decent prices. So we're going to be talking about more on that on The Batch Lady. 
And so um, one of the things that we have kind of in motion right now that we're still brainstorming and still working on the logistics of is a weekly gathering where you would put in three or four pounds and we would put our money together, buy in bulk, and then we would help prep together here in the sanctuary. So let's say we'd have somebody over here that's browning the mints and we'd have somebody over here that's, um, you know, um, prepping the pasta or rice or whatever. And we work together and put meals together that we can then take home and either cook in the oven or put in a slow cooker. Typically it would be a slow cooker. And um, so I just want to put a bug in your ear about that. So hopefully within the next Two to three weeks, we are going to have something that we can tell you about and um, that you could sign up for if you have any interest. Um, but I think that it could be really great for us because it would create, you know, an additional sense of community. It would allow us to help each other and be supportive because, you know, we all have a lack of time, a lack of money, a lack of, you know, we're just busy people and things are starting to get a little tighter with our finances. And so this is a way for us to work together to kind of make things better and us eat healthier. So I will let you know more about that. I just wanted to kind of plug that a little bit just to see if there might be any interest. So if you guys think, okay, excellent. Good, 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 excellent. Okay, so I thought that we would, um, I really feel like it's a great opportunity um, for us, so. Okay. Um, I'm going to go over knife safety in just a few minutes before we start cooking, but I'd like to talk about rice. So today's topic is rice. And um, so rice is believed to have first been grown in ancient southern China and India around 2500 BC. Now I'm not going to quote from Wikipedia all day, um, but it is interesting. It's the seed of a grass. You just don't really think about those things, that it's actually a seed of a big long, uh, grass that grows in flooded fields. And so they, they grow in like water, which is interesting. I mean, they're in the soil, but it's flooded. So the um, rice is a cereal grain. And interestingly, I, I was in my research, I found that the Great Wall of China is held together with sticky rice crazy right so um so it was built during the ming dynasty in the 15th and 16th centuries and workers used a porridge made with rice along with calcium carbonate to build the great wall of china such a cool i mean you know interesting thing so but i mean if you've ever tried to clean rice off a pot after it's hardened and dried then you know that that's a pretty good glue yeah um so when rice is harvested, it's called a patty, and you can see this um, kind of gif here that's going through the different layers. So the hull is the outer part of the rice, and that's the inedible part. They remove that, and then that is used to make like fertilizer and um, insulation and all kinds of other things. And then the next layer is the rice bran, which is a thin layer of skin. Um, that is the bran, the germ layer and so when you see brown rice that's what you're looking at is that that um, rice bran that is the part that has the most fiber but what's interesting is brown rice white rice where that has been removed that's the next step is they take that off and that becomes white rice white rice is shelf stable you know if stored properly for years, like 10 to 20 years. Brown rice, on the other hand, will go off in six to 12 months because that, that bran is left on. Um, and so it can, there's oils there and it can kind of go rancid. So it's just an interesting thing. So if you do buy brown rice um, and you're, gonna, you're not gonna eat it right away, it's good to keep it in the freezer and that way it'll stay good, kind of like you would nuts and things like that. Okay. The, um, the endosperm is that middle part of the, the rice, that inside part, and um, it's mostly starch. So, so that is kind of what rice is made out of. Um, let's see. 
varieties. So we have long grain rice. You've seen these, and these are the longer, uh, they're at least three to four times as long as they are wide. Um, and that's what you use when you just make like rice and beans or something like brown rice is what, you know, typical run of the mill rice that you find in the grocery store. Then you've got a medium grain rice, which is shorter and a wider kernel. And um, so it releases more starch during cooking. And so, um, so they, it tends to be stickier. Then you have your short grain rice that's typically uh, rice that's less than twice as long as it is wide. And, um, and so that's what we're working with today. Short grain rice, they're good for risottos, it's good for rice pudding, sushi, things like that. Your long and your medium rices, especially your long grain rice, you would want to rinse it um, before you use it. And you do that to rinse off the starch. And what that allows is it helps your rice to be fluffier. So you want your long grain rice to be fluffier. Now, um, I'm getting ahead of myself on my notes here. For some reason in the United States, though, they fortify rice with vitamins and minerals. And so if you rinse it, it kind of rinses those things off. But they don't, they don't do that here. So that's not something we need to wor worry about. Um, rice can be soaked. To, oh, so when should I rinse and when should I not? Long grain rice, you want to rinse. Things like risotto and rice pudding, you want those to release those starches because that's what makes them nice and unctuous and rich. And you'll see that as you cook this risotto. You can soak your rice to decrease your cooking time because rice does tend to take a long time to cook. And so you can soak it overnight and that'll decrease your cooking time. Now, another thing that um, is possible to do is to soak brown rice and sprout it. And what that, and it takes 20 hours to kind of stimulate the germination. And what that does is it enhances um, the amino acids. It makes it more bioavailable. It's not something that you would do typically, but if you wanted to make your brown rice even more um, nutritious than it already is, you could soak it. Okay. And then there's one more thing that is really important with rice. So today, the recipe that you're cooking makes four portions, and you'll be splitting that between the two of you. Now, last week, we made a load of um, bolognese. The reason that there's not going to be a tremendous amount of this left over is for this very reason. Um, Bacillus uh, cirrus. So, rice contains a, a specific bacteria that if not handled properly, it can make you sick. So, when you cook rice and you're not going to eat it right away, it's important to cool it down as quickly as possible. You can either spread it out on a tray and let it cool quickly that way. You can run cold water over it. Um, so if you're not gonna eat it right away and you're gonna use it like in batch cooking or something, cool it as quickly as possible. Because this toxin, um, this bacteria uh, creates a toxin that um, is heat resistant. So most bacteria, um, it, it breaks down when you heat it to a certain temperature for a certain period of time. This, this uh, bacteria, the toxins don't. And so even though you reheat the rice, it can make you sick. It doesn't happen very often. And if you've safely cooked your rice, like we're gonna do today, and like you typically would in your kitchen, and if you, again, just make sure that you cool it down if you're gonna be reheating it, um, then you're fine. Um, I don't, I've never known anybody to be, to have um, food poisoning from this. Have you, Pastor Steve? You have. Well, you were a doctor, so. Yeah, you were a doctor, so. Um, so anyway, just something that you need to be aware of. So when you cook rice, unless you're batch cooking to put, you know, meals up, do in the freezer, it's really good to just cook as much as you need at that point in time. So that's one of the reasons why we're not making like a massive amount today. Okay. okay. Before we move forward, I want us to go over just some quick knife safety. Many of you have seen that. Um, 
Make sure that your knife always stays on the cutting board. That's really important. You want to be able to, you want to know where your knife is at all times. You guys have two knives on your cutting board. Um, and so you're going to choose the right knife for the job. More important than anything else, choose the knife that's comfortable for you, whatever you're comfortable with. Never put a knife in a sink full of water. Don't ever try to catch a falling knife. If your knife falls off your workstation, just get out of the way, okay? It's, it's like second nature to just kind of grab, just try, don't do that. Um, you're always gonna cut away from your body. I know some people that kind of peel this way and do kind of this thing with their knife or towards their thumb. Um, these knives are very sharp, so we're gonna avoid doing that. Now, when handling your knife, it's important that your fingers stay behind the blade, okay? And then, so if you wanna pick up your knife, that would be great, whichever one is comfortable, right? In your, in your uh, primary hand. And then you're gonna put your knife on your cutting board. And then to stabilize your knife, if you're cutting um, a pile of things, to stabilize your knife, you can put your other hand on the end, on the top of the knife, and then just kind of chop and swivel like that. There we go. Now, if you're cutting something like an onion, for example, remember what we want to do is make sure we stabilize our food so that it's not, I mean, this is kind of rolling around. That's dangerous, right? So when we peel this onion, take the skin off, the first thing we want to do is we want to cut it in half. And then we have a stable onion to cut, okay? And when you do, you're always going to want to tuck your fingers. Oh, there they are. So tuck your fingers because if you're cutting, right, and your fingers are out here, whoop, that's not good. So tuck your fingers, and that way your knife is going to hit your knuckles like that when you're chopping. You see what I'm saying? Does everybody understand that? All right, brilliant. Okay. Good. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go over our ingredients. Does everybody have a recipe? Yes, and we're gonna make sure that our ingredients are on our workstation. So we have 30 grams of butter. Does everybody have your butter? Yeah, and then we've got one onion, two teaspoons of chopped garlic, a tablespoon of lemon juice, which there's bottles of lemon juice there, so when we get to that point, you'll need to use your tablespoon measure and, um, and measure a tablespoon of lemon juice. We have a half teaspoon of dried thyme, half teaspoon of salt, and a pinch of pepper. We have 200 grams of Arborio abor rice, also known as risotto rice. This is a short-grained rice. You also have 150 grams of white mushrooms that you're going to chop. And you have 940 milliliters of chicken stock on your workstation. Okay, is anybody missing anything? All right, well, let's get cooking. So the first thing that we're gonna do, and what we need to be very careful of this morning is these hobs have trouble getting very low. And so we want to start out with the lowest fire possible. But first, before we do that, we're going to chop our onions. So add your butter to your pot first. And then we're going to peel our onion. And what you can do is one, one of you peel the onion, the other one, and then, and then cut it in half and give that half to your partner. Okay? So just so that you know, I like to cut off the top. Spin it around and cut off the end. Remember to tuck your fingers, and then I peel my onion from there. John, would you do me a favor and um, get a couple of blue buckets, uh, blue bowls? They're um, in the kitchen there under the cabinet, just for their scraps. There we go. Now, while this is cooking, you guys can go ahead and chop your mushrooms. So we're going to make use of this time that we have. Make sure that you're constantly stirring. You want to watch your heat and not, not let it be too high. 
Did it go on? Okay, good, good, good. Nice. At this point, you can go ahead and add your lemon juice, thyme, salt, and pepper. So go ahead and add your spices. You can do it however you'd like. That is a great. So Julie, how do you, can I get everybody's attention, please? Could I get everybody's attention real quick? Julie had a great question, and her question was, how should we chop the mushrooms? That is totally up to you. If you've got somebody in your family that doesn't like mushrooms, you can mince them up as fine as you want to. If you love them, you want them big, do great big slices. If you want, do cubes, it's completely up to you. Yeah, the salt and pepper was in your with your time. Yeah. get everybody's attention again I do want to remind everyone that this is being recorded and it is going on YouTube so just be mindful of that um, especially in the spectator section because um, it's the, the audio will pick up on the video so just want to let every Steve wanted me to let everybody know um, for those who can't come and, and join us we want to uh, make that available. Okay, all right, y'all are getting a little ahead of me here, but that's okay. Um, let's go ahead and add our rice to your pot. Now, if I could just have your attention again, the reason that we do this is we wanna coat the rice in the butter. And we're gonna toss this around in the butter for about a minute or so. And what you want is you want to see the edges of the rice to start to get translucent. So it takes a minute or two for that to happen. But stir constantly. And that's really what you're going to be doing a lot of today, is you're going to be doing a lot of stirring. Because what we're going to do, you've got this, this jug of chicken stock, and not yet, but... When it's time, we're going to add it a half a cup at a time. And then you're going to stir it and let it cook until that liquid is absorbed by the rice. This is a very slow process. We don't want to rush it or else it'll get gummy and weird. So we want a creamy, lovely risotto, not a gummy, weird one. Okay. Has everybody, let's wait on that for just one second. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Give it another 30 seconds or so and then add your mushrooms. Okay, we're doing good here, yeah. yeah. Nice job, you guys. Yeah, you have a really good job. How are we doing here? Okay, 
Um, actually, we were supposed to put the rice in first. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go ahead and add your rice. Yeah. 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 Susan, if you would stir that, that would be great. If you need to stand up, you can. Yeah. We need to put your rice in first, ladies, before your mushrooms go in. Rice goes in first. Remember, we're going to saute our rice. Wait on, wait on that. Put your rice in. No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Don't put your stock in yet. Okay, give that a stir. Okay, now if you have added your rice and you see that the outside edges of it are just slightly translucent, go ahead and add your mushrooms. Do not add your stock yet. Night, no, that goes in at the end, Colin. Mm-hmm, good question. And what we're waiting for is for our mushrooms to begin to kind of sweat a little bit and let some of their juices out. So that's looking really good. That's looking really good. Nice. Yeah. Aiden, you need to get your mushrooms in there. This is looking good, Mary. Good job. It's okay if they like big chunks. If you guys like big chunks of mushrooms, it's totally cool. I like them big. Yeah. Remember, this is your risotto. If you like big chunks of mushrooms, that's cool. If you like it cut up really small, that's... Because see, I mean, well, Steve's busy in there. So I mean, this is the size. This is the size of some of mine. So yeah, it's. But I like mushrooms. So. Okay. All right. I need everybody to locate their measuring cups. Measuring cups. And if I could get your attention, what? Now, don't forget to stir. We want to, and we're going to move pretty quick here. But what I want to do is show you. These are your measuring cups. Just for anybody who doesn't know. Your biggest is a one cup. The next one is a half cup. It takes two of these to make a one cup. The next one is a third cup. It takes three of these to make one cup. Then you've got a quarter cup. It takes four of these to make one cup. Okay? So we're going to pick our half cup. Half cup. We're going to put some stock in it. Fill it up to the line over your pot. Pour that in. Instantly, that's going to reduce the heat in your pot, which is fine. And you're going to stir. And what's going to happen is that stock will begin to, the, the rice will begin to absorb the stock. Okay? And what you want to do is you want to keep stirring that until it begins to be absorbed by the rice. And you'll see when you move your spoon around that you won't see the stock on the bottom of your pan. When, when that happens, add another half a cup. But it's gonna take a little time. Okay, and we're gonna keep stirring, just keep. That's the thing with risotto, you wanna just keep stirring it. All right. And so look at the bottom of your pot and see if your liquid is, is, uh, is disappeared. And if so, let's add some more. Another half a cup. And we're gonna stir. Good job. Good job. That's very nice. That looks delicious. I could eat it just like that. Brilliant. 
Thank you, John. Okay. And this stock that we're using is just um, made with chicken bouillon. You could use fresh stock if you wanted to make your own stock. You could use vegetable bouillon. You could, I mean, it's completely up to you. Again, just like the soup class, this is a method that you're learning, right? Not necessarily, it is a recipe, but this is a method. Yes. Which one is this? Okay, so uh, Pastor Steve is going to pass around some risotto for you to taste. So one can stir and one can eat, and then y'all can swap off. So, yeah. Oh. Stirring and stirring and stirring. Again, we don't want to rush this process, so we want to keep our fire low. We should have some spoons. We're tasting three things today, y'all. We're going to taste the mushroom risotto that you're making. The next thing that we're going to taste is brown rice with a chili con carne. So if you don't eat beef, let Pastor Steve know. Um, and we can just bring you brown rice. The brown rice is absolutely fabulous. I just wanted you to have a taste of it. It's sweeter and nutty. It's really, really good. And then the third thing that we're going to taste is uh, rice pudding. <clears throat> so it's because of the... So Kath had a really good question. She said, "How? why is it that it's so creamy? You know, what makes it creamy? It's that short grain rice. They're starchier than the long grain rice. And so <laughs> the starches are going to come out as you're cooking it. And so that's what you're doing is you're coaxing those starches out. And that's why we're adding the liquid slowly to coax that starch out so that we get that creaminess. So, you know, rice pudding rice, pudding rice and risotto rice are very similar in shape. Um, and the only real difference between the two of them is that um, the risotto rice absorbs stock better and the pudding rice absorbs milk and cream better. So, mm. good, I'm glad. Good. Good. Okay. One second, Danny. Um, to all the parents who have little kids here, I just want to make sure there's no issues with allergies. There's, you've seen what's in the risotto. Any allergies? Are we okay? All right, I take that as a yes. Danny, question. Okay, so this is good. Go ahead and add some more. We're gonna, okay, so we're gonna add the entire jug of stock. Right? One half cup at a time. Half a cup at a time. When it gets dry, add your another half cup. Yes, you will put the entire 940 milliliters of stock. Yeah, so keep adding. Half a cup at a time. Yes. And yet, that's good, Dot. Be sure and knock the rice off of your spoon occasionally because it'll kind of get all... Yes, ma'am. Really? Yeah. That's excellent. That's right. Never eat breakfast before you come here. <laughs> All right. Any questions so far, you guys? Yeah, you're going to put every bit of that stock in there. Again, just a little at a time. We're coaxing all those lovely starches out. It's like it's nice and creamy. 
just keep stirring. And then when it gets dry and it's absorbed that liquid, no, no, we need to keep it low. This is a this is a longish process. It'll take us about 20 minutes to get fully um, to get that liquid fully absorbed by the rice. So, so we're not rushing it. You're doing good. Yeah, about a half a cup. Yeah. Nice job, Mary. Good job. Yeah. So what's coming out now is uh, chili con carne with brown rice. This is a lovely brown rice. It was donated by Marina from Minimal Footprint. Beautiful, beautiful brown rice. Really good for you because it's got that, that outer shell on it, that bran on it, so it's healthier. It's got um, more fiber, and fiber is good for our gut because it is a prebiotic, right? And our microbes love prebiotics, so it's good for our microbes. The chili con carne is um, some chili that Pastor Steve made, and uh, we, um, we served this also at our Common Ground, which is every Thursday. So every Thursday we're open from 12 to 6. We've got soup all day. And then in the evenings from 4.30 to 5.30, we're serving dinner. There's a menu on the bulletin board back there, and there's also some in our, um, in our uh, little stand back there if you want to get a menu. That is looking beautiful. Very good. Occasionally be sure and scrape the sides of your pot because you don't want to miss out on any of that delicious flavor. And pay attention. What do you think about that brown rice, Libby? It's good, isn't it? It's got a nice sweetness, yellow yeah, bite to it. Yep. You like it? It's good, isn't it? Yeah. It is brown rice. It's lovely. And I soaked it overnight, so yeah. Not yet. Yep. Let it keep going. Let me see your fire. Yeah, your fire is good. Yeah. It's interesting. We had um, we had a room full of kids Thursday night um, here for dinner, and they loved the rice. Which I was a little worried that they might not like it, but they really loved it. Yeah, there was one wee boy, and he went back for seconds of just the rice. I thought, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Doing good. Doing good. Excellent. Nice job, Mary. Doing good. Right?
When you get a chance, um, when you All right. Is it okay? We got thumbs up. Excellent. What do you think, Zoe? And Jay, also. What do you think? Yeah. I love the rice. Good job. I think you're ready. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely Or cornbread. Okay, well, we could make a few. We also have some in the freezer that if anybody wanted to take them. Yes. The cups that are. You may want to go ahead and make them all so you can pour it all out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're doing great. Yes, excellent. So you should be teaching. See how creamy that's starting to get? Starting to kind of, woo. Good. Very nice, y'all. Very nice. I think you're about ready for another half cup of sock. Yeah, that's looking great. You see how creamy that's getting? Good job. Good job. That's all right. We're, we can just swap off, you know? No big deal. Beautiful. That's good. Lovely. Do you see how creamy that's starting to get? Yeah. Excellent. So Dot was telling me that she makes her rice pudding in a pressure cooker, which is awesome. So if any of you have a pressure cooker, that is a fantastic tool. So you could probably hit her up for her recipe. Right, right. Yeah. 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 Pastor Steve doesn't like nutmeg, and so we don't have nutmeg in our house. <laughs> so he is not a fan. His mother didn't like nutmeg, and he does not like nutmeg. That is looking fantastic. You know, I've, um, you can also use coconut milk, which is really nice. Coconut milk in your in your rice pudding. So it's just one of those things that you just kind of make it however you like it. Yeah.
Yes. Sorry, this is Say again. You can take a couple if you want. Cinnamon. Bye. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the recipe, I followed the recipe. Yeah. Yeah. It's a recipe that I found online and then I tested it and um, made a few tweaks. Yeah. Yeah. It's looking really good. Is it alright? I would. Yeah. I would. Well, I'd like your recipe so I can use it in my picture cooker. I actually have a, a pressure cooker and I have two electric pressure cooker and I have two that go on the stove that you can in so I can do pressure canning. I brought those over with me. One same Grace, the other one same Faith. So named after my grandmother. Yeah. yeah. So, but I would love your recipe. Would love it, definitely. This is looking great, y'all. You still have quite a bit of stock left, don't you? Yeah. I think you're ready for some. Yeah. I think so. Oh, Nice job, you guys. Very nice job. I love me some Pinterest. Brilliant. Yeah.
So as you can see, they cook with cups in June. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So I don't know if you can send it to me on Facebook. Facebook. Are you on Facebook? Yeah, on Facebook. Can we do that? Yeah, I'm trying. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, how long does it take to cook the salt cooker? Four hours. Do you pressure cook a salt cooker? No. Just a pressure cooker. I don't think it's a salt cooker. No, it's a pressure cooker. I don't think. I'm going to have to look and see. Remember. It's been a while since we used it. I didn't know why I wanted to use it. I didn't know it was a salt cooker. And I have a salt cooker. And I don't have a little tiny kitchen. So, so I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Multitasking kitchen tool. That's awesome. I'll, I'll have to check the book and see. It could be, and I just don't know. Yeah. Okay. I'll look. Yeah, we're doing great. What you reckon, Colin? I just started some stalks. Uh, Good. I think it's, yeah, wait a few minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's okay. As you add more stock, it'll take longer between. Yeah, because it's slower to absorb it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, that's looking good. You'll be glad you did. Yes, yes. I think a little bit, a little bit more. Yes, perfect. Yes, slow and low. Very nice. Pardon? Oh, look how good that's looking. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, it's going to be nice and creamy. When it's done, you're going to want it to still be a little bit creamy, kind of like that, that much uh, moisture, but you are going to use every bit of that stock. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. So Danny had a really good question. You know, we are getting down to, some of you don't have a whole lot of stock left. You do want it to, when you finish with adding all of your stock, 
You don't want to cook it till it's dry. You want to still have a little bit of moisture. You guys aren't quite there yet, but you're getting there, right? Not at all. Not expensive at all. Um, <laughs> That's exactly right. The labor. You're paying for the labor. <laughs> That's right. So Kat had a good point, and that was that, you know, this is not an expensive meal, but you would pay a lot for risotto when you go to a restaurant. So... Um, so I guess it is the, you are paying for the labor of the stirring. Absolutely. Yeah, we're doing a good job. Now, one thing I want you guys to see real quick is, now I have been talking to you all and not stirring diligently like you have. Do you see the difference? You see the difference? Yeah, see the difference? because I haven't been diligently stirring mine the way that you guys have. So mine just looks like mushrooms and rice, pretty much. It'll come together, it just takes some more stirring. But that, when you stir and you go slow, you're rewarded with this beautiful, creamy deliciousness. So if you guys wanna reheat this later, Julie had a good question, if you wanna reheat it later, just heat it in the microwave so it's piping hot and enjoy. Awesome. Now, if you want to, you can stir in, there's a little cup of Parmesan cheese that's on your workstation. If you would like to stir that in at this point, now is the time to do it. And besides the fact that this Parmesan cheese is absolutely delicious, it adds two things. It adds a nice cheesy flavor and adds some creaminess, and it also adds salt. So Parmesan cheese is salty, so it adds a nice salt component to it. So what we're gonna do at this point is, um, Pastor Steve is gonna hand out some takeaway boxes, and then you can just split your risotto between the two of you. Um, each each uh, of the partners, and then you can take that home. We've got some paper bags over here, little carrier bags to take that home as well. I have some bags here. Now, Kath, we are not rushing you guys, so just take your time. It's getting there. It's beautiful. That's going to be delicious. Very nice. Very nice. You know, you could probably turn your heat off because most of that is going to be absorbed as it cools. Yep. Yeah? Give it. Yep. Yeah, perfect. That's awesome. Okay. So before we go, um, before we start packing up. If I could get everybody's attention real quick. Remember, you have learned a technique here, a process, not just a recipe, right? So you can make green pea risotto, you can make chicken risotto, bacon and herbs, whatever you'd like to flavor that rice with, you can. Use the same process. I also wanted to take this time to invite you guys to come to any of the other takeaway homemades, be sure and register. Because as you can see, we have limited space. And then also, um, we do monthly lunch and learns. The next one coming up is the 19th of November, and we're going to be talking about how to make sushi. It's not hands-on. You do We do have lunch together, and then we have somebody who demonstrates. No crinkled up noses. <laughs> sushi. Sushi does not mean raw fish, okay? There can be loads of stuff. One of my favorite sushi is, is uh, called the Kentucky Roll, and it's fried chicken. 
with mayonnaise and a little iceberg lettuce in it. It's so good. So we're going to talk about that. You guys will get to taste some. You'll get to see how it's made. All right. Also, I wanted to invite you guys to come on Thursdays. We do uh, soup and tea and coffee from 12 to 6. We've got folks in here that are doing crafts. If you want to learn how to crochet, we've got somebody here teaching that. I think next week we're going to have some, we're going to learn how to make sea glass, jewelry. Um, and then we serve dinner from 4.30 to 5.30. We've got a full menu. On the 24th is a Thanksgiving dinner, full out American Thanksgiving dinner. We are going to put up registration for that one because we've had a lot of responses. So I will send you all a link to register for that if you want to come. Also, another thing, um, on the 5th of December, we have uh, couches coming. They are brilliant. Go to Eventbrite where you register for this class and register. It is going to be a fantastic concert. So, so please be sure and do that if you're interested in coming. And then the final thing is we are having a Christmas Day dinner on the 25th right here at 11 o'clock. We're going to have some singing, some Christmas carols, and then we're going to feast. So you're welcome to come. You do need to register on Eventbrite just so that we know how many to prepare for. So there's going to be lots of delicious things. So loads of things going on. If you didn't catch all that, we've got flyers and stuff in the back, or you can always send me an email or a Facebook message. So thanks again. If anybody has any questions, I'm going to turn my microphone off, and then we can just chat and pack up our risotto. And thank you again for coming to Large Mads. Thanks, y'all.